everyone, it's Elena and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming my bullet journal for this month, which was the month of July. Um, so the theme for this month, I really wanted to make it like tropical, leafy, like greens, florals, and like succulents. Just because lately I've been getting into buying more plants and I really want my bullet journal to emulate the things that are going on in my life. So I really have been getting into plants, so I want to emulate that in my bullet journal. So I really tried to be more intricate with my drawings for this month because I'm usually not a very creative person and I don't have a lot of creativity, but I really wanted to push my creative abilities, whatever I do have, to try and do something a little bit more intricate. So it took a lot longer to film and it's a little bit longer than my usual videos, but I hope you guys can understand because I really want to be able to do something just a little bit different so I'm actually really excited to show you guys this video because I love the way that it turned out and I'm really proud of it and I hope you guys like it too so I'm gonna hand you over to the voiceover to show you everything that I did with my July bullet journal for this month okay you guys so for the title page I really wanted to draw a box with the different leafy greens coming out from around the box. I saw this on Pinterest and I was really inspired by it and I thought it was super cute. So I kind of did my own take on it because once again, I am not as artistic as people on Pinterest. So I just kind of do the best that I can. And I also can't come up with things like this in my head, like so many amazing bullet journalers. So I just kind of roll with it and use Pinterest as an inspiration. Um, I add these like really cute like ivy looking things hanging out from the other sides of the boxes or the box and I think that it's super cute it just adds something like little to it plus I'm really obsessed with these succulents called string of pearls and I don't know where I can find it but I'm so obsessed with them so I draw them a lot in this theme so just so you know so I just went over everything I believe with my 005 um, pigment micron just because I wanted the intricate parts to be a little bit smaller. Um, I'm also using one of my favorite techniques here with my markers which I will show after um, coloring in this leaf. I just really like using markers to create a watercolor technique and I'll show you how I do that. I think that if you have the right bullet journal and the right pens that you're doing it with, like the Pigma Microns, you can really make a bullet journal look amazing and not even have any watercolors. So basically what you do is you take like a plastic bag or something that's plastic, draw the ink on it, and then wet the paper where you want to put the ink with a little bit of water and then smear the ink on top of the water and then you can use your finger to sort of like shimmy around the colors to get it exactly the way that you'd like and I just think that this technique is super super helpful especially in a bullet journal especially if you're not super duper artistic just because it sort of takes away the sort of not great doodle factor away from your drawings because it sort of hides it by being like oh like that's really cool how it's like this ombre watercolor thing so I do that a lot in my bullet journal just because I find that it's kind of distracting away from the fact that I am not the greatest artist in the whole world but I still like bullet journaling because it's just fun and it takes a really long time especially this theme I'm not gonna lie to you it took me a really long time because I really wanted to get it right and do a good job. Also, you can use a napkin to blot away any of the extra ink if it starts inking up. But I really just wanted to keep with the green theme. I didn't really add any extra colors just because I really wanted everything to be green. Lately, when I'm driving to work and when I'm doing things, I've been focusing on nature a lot more and appreciating the fact that where I live is so beautiful and green and I'm so grateful to have trees and lots of grass and lots of I don't know nature around me because I feel like that's one of the things that lots of people take for granted that someday could disappear and I really wanted to emulate that here just because I don't know lately I've been trying to be more appreciative and more grateful and lately I've been really grateful for nature because let's hope global warming doesn't take that all away from us. Also, something that I added in this month's bullet journal that I usually don't is I also added a quote on the left page to my title page. I usually leave that page blank just because lately when I started 
bullet journaling again. I've been kind of intimidated by my journal and I haven't really wanted to experiment or do anything that's like a lot of drawing just because I haven't drawn in a really long time and I'm just like scared that I'm gonna mess up which is so contradictive to the original reason why I started bullet journaling which was to try and accept my mistakes and so this month I just decided to do it and I'm really honestly so happy with how it turned out it's very simple I really tried to be kind of minimalistic this month just because I find that I'm not the greatest artist so if I try to do things very minimally I'm usually more happy with how it turned out than if I overdo it with the doodles and drawings just because I see other people overdo it with doodles and drawings and it looks really nice but those people are are also really really good drawers so it doesn't make sense for me somebody who's very mediocre at doodling to try and overdo it if I just try to do it very simply I can really make the most of my bullet journal so that's what I've been trying to practice for this month so hopefully it works out and I hopefully I can keep doing it in my bullet journal and it'll I don't know I feel like it'll help my bullet journal be more aesthetically pleasing for me personally because it won't be overdone you know I feel like sometimes I have like this too much gene where I have this obsession with wanting it to really be the theme so I try to overdo it and oversaturate it with the themes ideas but I think keeping it really really minimal is the key to having a aesthetically pleasing bullet journal So like I said in my intro, I have honestly really been buying a lot of plants. I've always loved plants, but lately I've been taking it to the next level. And in order to pay homage to my lovely plant babies who've been with me since my freshman year of college, I actually doodled them on this page just because they've been growing with me as I've been growing. And I think them being there just suited the quote so well because as I entered college I grew as a person so much and they were it sounds silly but they were with it like they were with me through it all and they grew with me literally so I just thought it was really cute plus I just want them in my journal because they actually are like a big part of my life because I take them with me anytime I travel like to back and forth home back to school and they're really important to me because I think that I don't know they just make my my room and my life feel just so much more alive and I don't know it sounds really silly and maybe a little stupid but I think that having plants in your life is almost like having a therapy animal because I don't know Maybe they just produce more oxygen and I'm just a happier person because of it. I don't really know the science behind it, but honestly, having a plant in your life makes you, I don't know, more responsible and just happier in my opinion. I don't know. I could just be really weird, but I went ahead and doodled my plants. Um, they're super cute. I have lots of succulents. I have an aloe. They're all really, really cute and I love them so much. So in the honor of this month and last month being very experimental for me, I'm experimenting with another monthly layout that I saw on Pinterest. I'm going to show you guys the picture right here. Um, it was for a different theme. I believe Amanda Rach Lee did this theme. It was like a sea theme, but I loved the way the calendar looked. I just like am obsessed with it. I don't know. The two page calendar is just so cool in my opinion. It just... I don't know it just like splits up the calendar on both pages without drawing a big box it just looks so much more like eye-pleasing and eye-catching so I decided to do that on my spread just because I really been experimenting with new monthly spreads and I loved the floating box theme that I did last month but I really just wanted to try this because I thought it would be kind of new and different and maybe I'll do this one for next month or the floating box theme I don't know or maybe I'll experiment again but I really like the way that this looks I just think it looks so like fresh and crisp and minimalistic and that is what I've been going for this month so it really suits the theme really well. Also, I apologize for my big head getting in the way in all of these clips. I didn't realize it until I played it back and I was like, are you kidding? Elena, seriously, you don't need to get that close to your bullet journal to see what you're doing. So I apologize for that. I tried to crop it out as best as I could. 
Uh, I'm really sorry if it becomes really distracting my hair and my head. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm just adding my YouTube tracker on the side and then I put a spot for notes because lately just with like I started a new job and I've been trying to hang out with like my friends a lot more and do more things and if there's something that I want to do I'm gonna write it down in that section um, so I really just wanted to have a section to jot down like things that I'm thinking about or things that I need to remember also I'm trying to practice my little calligraphy if that makes sense like I do so much better when it's big text and I can focus on where the downstrokes are but I really struggle when it comes to writing the days of the week because it's so small so I really wanted to practice that here and I just used a Tombow Fudenosuke pen and then I just took um, a Crayola super tip marker to make the little circles to put the date in and just to keep the minimalistic vibe I decided to just use these leafy washi tapes that I have just because I I don't know I just thought it would be kind of cute that way I wouldn't have to doodle all over the theme like I said earlier I just really want to be able to not oversaturate it with doodles just because it's just too much for me and I really want it to be minimalistic also change of scenery because like I said also in the beginning, I'm really trying to appreciate nature more. So it was a beautiful day and even though I was filming and I really wanted to get this out before July, I really just wanted to go outside. So I apologize if my shadow and the sun and the shaking is really distracting, but I really just wanted to appreciate like being outside and there was something wonderful about bullet journaling, bullet journaling outside. It was just, I don't know. It was just nice and relaxing, the feeling the wind hit me instead of sitting at my desk hunched over over a camera and a ring light. It was just nice to be able to just sit with my camera and my book with the wind blowing and the sun shining. There was just something so pleasing about it. So if you've never bullet journaled outside and you're an avid bullet journaler, I would really recommend doing this outside. I don't know. It was just, I don't know. It was very zen. It just felt really good. So. Yeah, I'm really, really glad that I did this, but I apologize if some of the scenes are distracting because of it. Um, I also doodled more um, little plants on the bottom. These ones I don't have, but I just thought they would be cute to draw anyway. Um, they just looked really cute, so I just decided to doodle those and just play around with the colors and which ones would have color on the vase, which ones wouldn't. I just thought that that would be kind of a cool take on it. Also, if you're not somebody who doodles a lot, if you look up on Pinterest doodles of whatever, it's kind of helpful to give you a little bit of inspiration on how to doodle because I was never one of those people that was a doodler in school, so I kind of had to learn how to doodle. So Pinterest is really helpful with that if you're somebody who's just starting or somebody who wants to improve on doodling in your bullet journal, I would recommend doing that because it is very helpful. So for the next spread, I wanted to do my mood tracker a little different. Last month, I did a mood tracker where I drew the lemons all over the lemon tree because my theme was lemons, <laughs> but I really didn't like coloring in the lemons. I just felt like it was really gaudy and too much, and I just didn't like it. So this month, I wanted to do a Polaroid mood tracker, but do the color green as like variations of the color green for the specific moods just to keep it simple with the color theme but still minimalistic it would have been cute to draw a bunch of plants but this month is 31 days so i would have had to do 31 doodles of plants and for me first of all that's really overwhelming and second of all, it would just be kind of gaudy on the page, kind of like the lemon spread. And I just really didn't want to do that again. I really just wanted it to be very simple. So I found this spread. I saw it on Pinterest once, so I did my take on it. And then I went ahead and made a legend with varying colors of green that I would fill in based on my mood.
So basically for the colors in the legend, the bluer the green, the sadder I was and the lighter the green, the more happy I was. I also tried to keep the same font, which was this tall, skinny, all caps font, just because I've never done like a font throughout my bullet journal, but it's something that I want to experiment with. So I tried to do that um, in specific parts of my bullet journal where it was kind of like necessary, but it's definitely something I need to improve on. Also, just to make it more of the theme, I decided to draw these two hanging plants from the top of the bullet journal um, just to bring the theme together. Um, like I said before, I really love the plant string of pearls, so I decided to do a string of pearls hanging plant. So for this page, I also did something that I've never done before, which is a summer playlist spread. I've seen Amanda Rachley do this, I've seen it all over Pinterest, and I am not somebody who experiments with new music. I stick to the same old playlist, the same old songs, and I listen to them on repeat. I'm just, I've always been like that. I just enjoy the same sounds. I'm very, like a very repetitive person. I like to watch the same movies. I like to listen to the same sounds. I don't know. I don't know why I'm like that. I just really enjoy that. So I decided to make a summer playlist of the songs that I usually play every summer, which is Super Love by Charlie XEX. I am obsessed with Super Love. I don't know why. It's just a summer bop. And if you've never heard that song, Song, you really should because it is a bop. The newest song that I've actually been listening to um, that actually came out this summer was Do In Time. Um, it was like a cover of the Sublime album um, done by Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey is one of my favorite artists of all time and I was so excited that she did that song because I do like Sublime too and I love that song. It's one of my favorites even though it's very basic. Um, but it's really, really good. And if you've never heard it, listen to the original version and listen, li and then listen to Lana's version because they're both so good. I've also been listening to, um, the Hamptons. I believe it's by Transviolent. I think that's what it's called or her like name or whatever I think is Transviolent. And I'm obsessed with Tame Impala, Tame Impala every day. The Currents album is a bop. If you really like chill music, Tame Impala is your band. And I'm obsessed with the song Disciples. I listen to it all the time, walking to class. I especially love it in the summer because it just has that really like carefree sound to it. So it's just sick. If you've never listened to that song, you really should because it is a vibe, that's for sure. So I just tried to do calligraphy on this page too so that I could practice it and then I just pasted the album covers onto their little playlist thing. And then I also just wanted to do washi tape on this page just to keep it simple because I didn't want to doodle all over the page just because it's supposed to be very specific to music, not really it doesn't need any doodles or anything, so I just kept it simple with the washi tape. So now I'm going to jump into doing my weekly spread, which I saw this very minimalistic spread on Pinterest, so I'm going to remake it here because I thought it was super cute and I loved the way the plants were drawn, so I went ahead and copied one of the plants because it was the way that they drew it, it looked like a clear teardrop hanging plant. If you've ever seen those, they're like a glass hanging plant and I just think that that's so cute. So I copied that idea because I thought that that was super cute. And I obviously am not a good doodler, so if I see something I really like, I usually am like, oh, maybe I should put that in my bullet journal. That would look really, really cute. So I just drew the um, days of the week with all lowercase font. Um, and then I did a just very minimalistic sticky note thing that says, you are here to grow just to keep reminding myself because I've been jumping out of my comfort zone a lot and I think I need to hear that over and over again so hopefully when I see it this week 
I'll be able to, you know, be like, yeah, like you are still growing, you're still learning. It's okay to feel out of your comfort zone. I also tried to keep it very minimalistic. This was all that I did. I added very little color just because I wanted it to stay simple, just so it wouldn't be so overwhelming. A lot of my favorite spreads as I started flipping back through my bullet journal were the ones that weren't oversaturated. I know I keep saying it, but honestly, it makes it easier too because it doesn't take long to do minimalistic spreads. So if you're somebody who, um, doesn't like to take a lot of time to bullet journal or do anything, I would recommend doing a minimalistic spread. That way you can still enjoy the idea and the cuteness and just like great benefits of bullet journaling and the productivity benefits without spending so much time. So this is the flip through of the final July 2019 bullet journal and I am obsessed with it. I hope you guys liked watching this video. I tried to be out of my comfort zone a little bit and I hope you guys appreciated it and I will see you guys in my next video.